Hi everyone, recently we discovered that we can get lots of frog legs every day from making bunny men to fight with the frogs. After I did more testing, here are 5 useful tips to run this farm more efficiently. Also, in the end of this video, I put two detailed results of this frog and bunny man farm after running several tests, not only from using mods. First tips, how to find the rabbit hutch easier. As the cave can be confusingly big to search for rabbit hutch, here are two indicators to help. First indicator, rabbit hutch usually located in green mush tree area. So if you see a green mush tree biome, roam around that area. Second indicator, if you see a carrot, that means there must be a rabbit hutch nearby. The moment you see a carrot planted on the ground, drop all meat items in your inventory and get those meats again later. Second tips, sometimes if we reload near the farm, the bunny man that's supposed to be chasing the food in bait cage suddenly disappear, or only one or two bunny men are outside. This is because the other bunny men are inside their house. To bring them out, simply turn on ice blingomatic and burn each house. The bunny men will come out from their house and ice blingomatic will extinguish the flame, so the farm can continue immediately. Third tips, sometimes the frog are not attacking the bunny man because the frogs need to be near a target in order to start attacking that target. So instead of waiting the frogs to randomly jump near the bunny man, we can attack one frog, then run to where the bunny men are and run past them. The frogs that were chasing us will stop following us after some time, then they will start attacking nearby bunny men. Also, as you can see in this video, I put cut grass on first lot of my inventory, so whenever a frog lick me, I won't drop any important tools. Tips number 4. Remember to always have extra football helmet in inventory whenever we are near this farm, either to lure the frogs, help the fight, or to harvest. Because sometimes we might wrong click and pick up a frog leg when the bunny men are nearby, causing them to attack us immediately. It's understandable if we accidentally die, have a bit effigy or life-giving amulet nearby the farm for quick resurrection. Tips number 5, bait cage placement. If your bunny man doesn't fight with the frog often, that's because the bunny men are not close enough with the frog. We need to build the bait cage near at least two ponds. The reason is to make bunny men stand within frog's attack range when it spawns from the ponds. Here are a few examples. We have 8 ponds here. These 2 ponds and that 3 ponds are close to each other. The best choice will be here. Also make sure the bed cage doesn't block the area near the ponds so we won't be stuck in a spot when being attacked. As the time goes, when you have extra stones, build walls to surround the ponds, so the frog will not roam too far away and increase the chance of frog attacking the bunny man. By the way, if the ponds are very close to each other like this, where we cannot walk in between the ponds, be careful in placing the bait cage because some frogs can get stuck between those ponds and cannot reach the bunny man, causing decrease in frog legs production, like in this situation. Instead, imagine a direction where the frogs can go from both sides of the ponds without being stuck. That's where we make the bait cage. As we can see here, now all the frogs can approach the bunny man. For the first in-game example, 
I try to get 1000 eggs by day 35 using this farm. By starting the game from spring, so I skip winter for the farm to keep operating. I was lucky to find two rabbit hutch set piece close to each other. By day 6, I found the frog born set piece and quickly set up the farm. By day 7, the farm started. However, because there are 14 pawns, that means there will be 14 frogs spawned in each spawn interval. Currently, I have 9 bunny men from 9 rabbit hutch. I help to kill some frogs so the bunny men will not be overwhelmed. As in terms of number, it's 9 bunny men versus 14 frogs. Frog only deal 10 damage, but several frogs can stun lock a single bunny man. We don't want the bunny man to die, because the farm will stop for a day if it happens. So we will need to assist the bunny man if their number is less than the pawns. A simple rule is 4 by 5. 4 bunny men can handle 5 frogs. Make it a habit to always check if you have any meat or egg in your inventory before entering the farm. From day 7 to day 9, I got 126 frog legs, a pretty good start. After we harvest this farm, it will be on cooldown for one day because bunny men need one day to respawn. Use this cooldown period to explore the map or do the things we need to do. Example, we harvest on day 9, then the farm will continue on day 11. However, one thing we need to note, because this farm only operates when we are near the farm, if we come to the farm on the middle of the day, example in this video, day 11, this situation might happen, where there are a double amount of frogs that are attacking the bunny man. Because the frogs keep spawning from their pawns, even if we are far away from the pawns. But the bunny man only start attacking the frogs if we are near. Here, the bunny men were overwhelmed by 25 plus frogs from first and second spawn interval. At first, I thought it was a bug that caused the frog to spawn in double amount. But it happens again on day 17. That's when I figure it out. So try to come back to the farm in the beginning of the day or go back on duck's time and let all the bunny men assemble for the next morning fight. I planted several flowers to get regular butterfly wings and cook it with fish table to get butterfly muffin. So I can recycle all frog legs and meats I got from this farm to reach my target. From day 23 to day 35, it was a smooth sailing as I figured out how to run the farm effectively. By the end of day 35, I counted the eggs I have and it was so satisfying to know that not only I reached my target of 1000 eggs, but also surpassed it with a sweet number of 1024 eggs plus a good amount of bunny puff that could be traded into 2 gold nuggets each. Now we don't have to worry about gold nugget anymore. And we will always have a food source ready to be harvested. Or if we need a lot of rot for our farm, we can simply let all those frog legs to rot and harvest more than 100 rot every 3 days. But my favorite is using Wilson to transmute these cold nuggets into nitrate, then craft it into gunpowder for a boss fight. The link for full video of this run can be watched in the description box. Last one, for us to know how much we can get from this farm, I copy this world and try to run this farm in spring, summer and autumn. Here's the result in detail. In spring, we harvest every 3 days because even though frog legs last for 6 days before become rot, continuous rain makes frog legs only last for 4 to 5 days. Some of the frog legs already become rot when I harvest it every 4 days. So it's better to harvest every 3 days. As we can see, the frog legs production increase as the day goes closer to summer because of longer daytime. In summer, make sure we already have ice cooling surrounding the rabbit hutch because of potential wildfire. 
Here we can see increase up to 30% in frog legs production because there are enough time for the frogs to come out from the ponds 4 times instead of the usual 3 times. We harvest every 3 days because food spoil 25% faster in summer. Watch out for end lion's tremor by the way. In autumn, it's the most wonderful time of the year. The frog legs production result is similar with spring. However, we can harvest every 4 days because frog legs can last for 6 days peacefully unlike in spring or summer. But in early autumn, usually there will be a rain. If it's raining, we harvest every 3 days and by mid autumn, we can harvest every 4 days. Since usually there will be no rain by the mid of autumn. This is the total amount of frog legs meat and bunny puff that I got. Almost 1,800 frog legs from 42 days in total. Yes, I understand that we will not be spending the whole time only managing this farm, as there are a lot of things we can do. However, if you have a friend that likes to take care of the base, either cooking, farming, or managing resources, this farm can be a very rewarding addition for your base, as it only need one time set up for it to keep running. Even a simple farm of 3 ponds and 3 rabbit hutch can provide a steady income of foods and resources enough for 2-3 to three players' daily needs. And you might be wondering or complaining why I made this frog and bunny man farm video again because I already made 2 videos similar to this. It's because I want to make sure you can build and get the benefit of this farm properly. Not only to reap the rewards but also how to manage the risks. So you will not waste resources of building many rabbit hutch but on incorrect position or wondering why the frog and bunny man didn't fight often because the frog keep roaming in other direction. I hope this video will help to answer questions you have about this farm. Thank you so much for watching this farm. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Have a great day and take care.